All right, for this audio analysis, I've chosen to do a rhetorical analysis on one of Donald Trump's speeches. This speech was held in North Carolina in August 2016. My outline for this presentation is that firstly, I will be looking at the rhetorical pentagram and what this can tell us of Donald Trump's speech. Then I'll be looking at what he presents as the new American future then uh, different aspects of Trump's rhetorical tools, and finally a conclusion. All right, so in the rhetorical pentagram, I'll be looking at the speaker firstly, uh, that is Donald Trump, and he is the Republican presidential candidate. He's speaking to a, uh, dir uh, directly to an audience consisting of potential voters and also having a secondary audience, that is people who are, who are reading it, going to read it through the papers or watching it on television. All right, so elaborating on the circumstances, uh, by this being held in August 2016, it means that it is held during this uh, election period. And this is very important because, of course, Donald Trump, he wants to uh, persuade his listeners to uh, vote for him in uh, when the vote is going to when the election is going to take place. And this place is very important uh, because it is North Carolina and North Carolina is considered as a swing state, meaning it can uh, differ from voting either for the Democratic Party or the Rep Republican Party, varying from year, uh, election to election. Also, this North Carolina uh, swing state is important because it has had a change of demographics, meaning um, it has had an increase of African American and other uh, ethnic minorities, and it has had a, a decrease of white people. With and white people is considered uh, Donald Trump's main target group, and African American and other minorities often vote for the Democratic Party. So in order to, for Donald Trump to win this state, he has to make a broader appeal. All right, so the language of Donald Trump consists of short sentences. Um, I'll just read some one for you. It is in the beginning of the speech. Uh, we are one country, one people, and we will have together one great future. So, it consists of this paratactic uh, sentence structure, but it is very easy to follow. It doesn't make it complicated, and he is using very simple words. This is only one example, but it is something that is present uh, throughout the speech, that he uses these not complicated uh, phrases. So this makes his language easy to understand for everybody. It doesn't have to be well educated or any other part, but it uh, it is a language that everyone can understand. All right. So the intention, I believe, is of course, Donald Trump wants to gain as many voters as possible for him to win this state, and he does this by various tools. Firstly, um, he's speaking of different topics. But one I've chosen that is one of the main ones is something he calls the new American future. And it is something that Donald Trump creates by um, having all these contrasts between what kind of America they have right now and uh, which is something that he is not satisfied with and then what he wants to create for America. So what kind of great America he wants to um, wants for all of them to have. And Trump, he sort of makes these contrasts between him not being a politician. He is rather a businessman and he is also anti-establishment, which is something that is very popular at this time because people are not um, <clears throat> very happy with the system. So Hillary Clinton's experience of 30 years of being a politician is something that doesn't come to her advantage because Donald Trump often says that during these last decades she has done nothing good for the country. She has even made it worse by <clears throat> he, uh, 
he's come with all these uh, examples of her uh, creating these um, bad things for the country, such as ISIS and going into different wars, and yeah, so she's done all of these things. All right, looking into some of the examples, one example I've chosen from the text, it's sort of hard to say where it is, but I'm just gonna say it so it goes. In the world I come from, if something is broken, you fix it. If something isn't working, you replace it. If a product doesn't deliver, you make a change. I have no patience for injustice, no tolerance for government incompetence, no sympathy for leaders who fail their citizens. That's why I'm running to end the decades of bitter failure and to offer the American people a new future of honesty, justice, and opportunity. A future where America and its people always, and I mean always, come first. So firstly, he's using this tool of triads. He's using it twice in this example. The first one being if, he's uh, saying if three times, and Anna for saying it in, in the beginning of it. So he's stating this, uh, making this comparison to his world of business that he uh, he is experienced with, and then the uh, uh, American American country. So if something is broken, you fix it. So he's a man who can fix things, <coughs> and uh, if a product doesn't deliver, you make a change, and that is exactly what he has come to do because he wants to make a change to the this establishment that America has right now, the political system of it. Yeah, so this triad makes um, his statements easier to memorize because it sort of creates this pattern and making his uh, message more uh, memorable for uh, his listeners. I believe the uh, triad of Three times no, I have no patience, I have no tolerance, I have no sympathy. Well, um, it's harder to uh, memorize, but I guess that it just creates some uh, ethos because he is a man that doesn't tolerate these things, and by stating it in this pattern, he he's making. Um, not his statements memorable, but rather his character of um, a man who wants to fix things and a man who doesn't tolerate uh, things such as tolerance. Uh, sorry, no tolerance for government incompetence. All right, next example is, uh, it goes... Every single citizen in our uh, land has a right to live in safety. To be one united nation, we must protect all of our people, but we must also provide opportunities for all of our people. We cannot make America great again if we leave any community behind. Nearly four in ten African American children are living in poverty. I will not rest until children of every color in this country are fully included in the American dream. All right, so this is what I was talking about earlier with that Donald Trump, he wants to appeal to a broader target group than he usually does. He wants to include minorities such as African American. And he's stating that four in ten African American are living in poverty. And um, he's using the word children, which is something that we can all emphasize with. And um, <clears throat> he's talking about this minority group and how they have these uh, conditions that aren't um, that aren't good. So he wants to make a change to that as well. And by doing this, he want he appeals to a uh, a target group in order to gain um, this state. So he wants to yeah he wants to have these uh, black because if if he doesn't get these African American with him, he he probably won't win the state. All right. So, in to sum it all up, we need to look at Donald Trump's. He's an experienced businessman, and that's why he's great at getting results. He's great at promoting, and he's uh, great at selling himself. And therefore, he can use these techniques to uh, 
in order to win this election.